up, 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 show. Yeah, we down, down here on the ground. Yeah, we up, 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 Yeah, we up, up, up in the clouds. Yeah, we up. Yeah, we up. Yeah, we up. Yeah, we up. Welcome to the Paragon News Network. All of us here at PNN hope you had a wonderful spring break. I'm Griffin Garba. And I'm Kasara Moore. The Paragon News Network covers stories that interest us, the Paragon Knights. We comb the current news to give you a blend of international, national, and local news. As well as the news that really matters, our very own Paragon News. So without further delay, Kasara has this story on Pope Benedict XVI. Thanks, Griffin. World attention is focused on Vatican City. Pope Benedict XVI has made history by being the first pope to resign in 600 years. Many Catholic cardinals flock to the Vatican in Rome to set an election day. Among those in the running are Peter Turkson from Ghana, Africa, who would be the first black pope, and Timothy Dolan, born in St. Louis, Missouri, who would be the first American pope. As Catholics flood the streets of the city and the electing cardinals arrive, the world waits as Election Day comes closer. Now to Seamus with our Paragon Sports Wrap-Up. Hi, I'm James Quinn, and this is the Nightly Sports Rundown. The JV so, uh, girls' silver team had a season for the ages. After an amazing regular season, they made it all the way to the district tournament finals. In the championship game, they fought through injuries and foul trouble, but couldn't get the last shot to go in. The second place finish proves that there is a uh, promise for the Lady Knights basketball program. Coach Nick Perino is very moved by their performance. The varsity girls black team won a third place trophy in a double overtime win over the, over the favorited Redeemer team. The girls hit a three point shot with 40 seconds left in overtime to win the game. They went seven and one over one stretch in the middle of the season, and with so many seventh graders on the team, the bar has been set for their next eighth grade year. The team's lone senior, Emily, Emily Denuser, graduated as the third leading scorer in Paragon history. Another record was set by seventh grader Riley Allen, who became the school's all-time leader in assists. Varsity Boys Silver won the B Bracket Championship. We are, so we are so proud of the senior class for all they've done for nice basketball. It is the second straight year that a varsity silver team has won the title. Last year they won the A Bracket title, going 24-0. This season they went out in style with another first place trophy. Some other highlights that happened during the season was the uh, Varsity Boys white team finishing runner-up in their division. The white team made it to the Final Four A bracket, with a team made up of all seventh graders, their future was also bright. Varsity Boys black shirts made it to the Final Four of the A bracket this year for the 11th straight year. The senior class graduated, graduated with the third most wins in Paragon history. JV Boys black shirt made it to the district finals before coming up short in the title game versus St. Louis. The team ended, ended the regular season by playing St. Austin's at St. Teresa's for the conference title, but lost at St. Teresa's. JV Boys Silver finished in a tie for second place in their division. JV Boys White finished third in their division. The JV Girls Black won two of the last three games and continued to improve all season. The Knights are now shifting their energy to spring sports, which include golf, tennis, track, and JV soccer. We'll update you on those for the next PNN. For now, with the Nightly Sports Rundown, I'm Seamus Quinn. Thanks, Seamus. Paragon's perk of having fast food on Fridays has been a much loved part of the week. Paragon reporter Gillian Turner wants to see who is Paragon's favorite fast food Friday restaurant. Here at Paragon, we enjoy the perk of ordering fast food on Fridays. So I went around to ask, what is your favorite fast food Friday? I'm here with Riley Allen from the 7th grade today. So Riley, what's your favorite fast food Friday place? I like East Side Pies a lot, it's really good. What's your least favorite fast food Friday place? Oh, uh, I don't really like Witch Witch that much. I'm here with Kieran O'Madden from the 7th grade today. Um, so Kieran, what's your favorite fast food Friday restaurant? Um, well I'd have to say, um, P. Terry's. We only had it once. I don't know if we're going to have it again, so I'll say Witch Witch. Okay, um, what's your least favorite? Three words. Sam Hopper from the fifth grade today. What's your favorite fast food Friday place? Which which? What's your least favorite? Um, Freebirds. I'm here with Ben McHorse from the sixth grade today. 
So Ben, what's your favorite fast food restaurant? Uh, pizza. What's your least favorite? I'm here with Kayla Salisbury for the sixth grade. So Kayla, what's your favorite fast food Friday place? Pizza. What's your least favorite fast food Friday place? Zoe's Kitchen. Yeah. Gwyneth Yeager from the fifth grade today. <laughs> Hi, Gwyneth. Um, so, what's your favorite fast food Friday place? What's your least favorite fast food Friday place? I'm here interviewing Sophia Ho from the eighth grade today. So, Sophia, what's your favorite fast food Friday place? Uh, probably Slotchkey. What's your least favorite fast food Friday place? Definitely Freebirds. I'm here interviewing Ben Brimble from the eighth grade for our fast food Friday story. So Ben, what's your favorite fast food Friday place? Um, definitely free. What's your least favorite fast food Friday place? Well, we had Zoe's Kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't even think, I can't even think about Zoe's Kitchen. <laughs> so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> If you could have one place that we don't already have to deliver to us, what would you choose? Probably some place with Chinese food. Maybe a home size pizza. Okay. Chipotle. Um, Rudy's. Yeah. Torches tacos. Definitely Chipotle. Chipotle is the bomb. Dot com. Thank you. Hot day. Okay, thank you. Definitely KFC. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank in Paragon News, a fifth grader has advanced to state GOB competition. Spencer has this story on this special night. I recently went and asked the current GOB champion, Chin Mai of the fifth grade, and Carson Coronado of the eighth grade, what it felt to be like to be a part of the GOB contest. So, Mr. Reynolds, what is the GOB? Well, the GOB is a competition that's sponsored by the National Geographic magazine. Um, it is conducted in thousands of schools across the country, so hundreds of thousands of kids. And the idea is we're going to pick one winner from each school, uh, and then those school winners will take a written test, and the top 100 in each state will, go th will then go on to a state B. And then the one winner of each state will then go to the national championship in Washington, D.C. in May. Have we ever had a student go to the state competition? We have. Two years ago, course, Carson Coronado, an eighth grader, who was then a sixth grader, um, went on to the state, and he finished sixth in the state of Texas. Hmm. And how'd you prepare for the state competition? Well, that wasn't until March, so I really actually knew I got into state. So um, I, would, uh, I bought a couple of books and uh, just went through some questions that they might ask. Uh, just a couple guidebooks just to have prepare for the GOB and some sample questions they had. And what is the competition like? Um, it's really serious. Um, they break you up into groups at first, and they take you into separate rooms and they ask you preliminary questions. And then after, if you continue to advance, you move on to a higher round in front of a, all of, all the parents and everybody. And then after that, if you win, you go into a final round, and that's really serious. It's just a couple. It's ten to eight people or so. How'd you get into geography? Um, I don't know. I just something that always interested me, just looking at maps and magazines. It's just kind of a fun thing I like to do just in my free time, just kind of look at uh, National Geographic magazines and maps and stuff. And do you have any suggestions for Chiang Mai, who is now going through the state geography? I'm gonna have to say that uh, um, study a bit. Uh, don't overstudy, but uh, definitely make sure that uh, you feel prepared about what you're doing. Uh, don't get overly nervous and just kind of enjoy yourself. Okay. Chin Mai, how did you find out that you were going to the state GOB competition? One day, Mr. Re Mr. Hathaway actually came to me and said, Mr. Reynolds has something for you. I went into his room and he told me I was going to the state 
QB competition in Bedford. That's near Dallas. How are you preparing for the state competition? There are these two books called How to Ace the National Geographic Bee and The World Factbook Countries A to Z by National Geographic. Also, I play a game called Juby Challenge. It actually asks you questions from the National Geographic. Do you enjoy geography? Oh yes, I do. How did you get into geography? Well, it all started in elementary. I was doing this thing called pin maps, countries and the capitals. Anything else to add? Uh, we're just all real proud of Chiang Mai. It is quite an accomplishment, especially for a fifth grader. And uh, we just wish him all the best of luck. Good luck, Chiang Mai. We're all rooting for you. Thank you. Thanks, Spencer. Good luck, Chiang Mai. Paragon recently participated in Pennies for Patients. We raised money for leukemia research and had a college challenge to help. Paragon Prep managed to raise over $4,000. The winning prep college was USC, and Yale took the win at primary. USC and Yale get to enjoy a lunch at Olive Garden. Congrats, USC and Yale. On this day in history, March 18, 1965, Russian astronaut Alexei Leonov became the first man to walk in space. Have a great week. We leave you today with our PNN bloopers. Thanks for watching. Bye. Some things are just meant to be. Did you get my bloopers? Because I got a camera in the middle of the camera. And when it does, it's already gone. Now we're practically never still. More likely to move. I can't see these videos. I can't see these videos. I can't see these videos. I do want to be, I, you know what, if I could have done everything, I would have done it all. I would have been a producer, no, the set person, I could do it all. But yeah, I could do it all. I could do it all. Like, that's what I call me Superman. When do we ever call you Superman? Everybody has a... I think one of them has to have me. I need to be on the camera. This stage can have me on the camera. I mean, no. You can't.